Greetings, my name is John Gabriel and welcome to my new calculus site. In today's short video I'll be discussing the perceptions of most mainstream academics. Uh, the one I'll be focusing on today is called Professor Norman Wildberger who teaches at a university in Australia and he has a lot of videos on the internet. So let's begin. Now, uh, Wildberger seems to be a reasonably nice man and, you know, he's, he's one of the more sane mainstream uh, academics and uh, he's reached a realization uh, of certain facts which other mainstream academics haven't been able to reach in hundreds of years. Uh, but at the same time, uh, Wildberger uh, doesn't really understand the reasons, for example, why there is no such thing as a real number. He, he'll agree that real numbers don't exist. Uh, however, he has no proof that Dedekind cuts are uh, not valid or Cauchy sequences are not valid. So he, he'll uh, provide certain videos with uh, uh, the topic that he discusses. However, none of the proofs or the reasons he gives are actually uh, supportive of his views. Now, I'm not going to talk about those views in which he is correct, but his understanding of Euclid. So, unfortunately, Wilberger never understood Euclid or Greek geometry. And I'm going to show you in a very short presentation why he didn't. So let's look at the very first comment I wrote here, which I don't believe has been published yet, but it's 6.30. Um, and let's go to 6.30 and see what Wilberger says very quickly. 6.30, uh, 6.30. about breath. Uh, in this edition of Euclid, a line referred to a, uh, just a sort of continuous line, a curve, what we would say today. The ends or, or bounds of a line are points. So as far as he was concerned, when you drew a line, there was a starting point and a starting, a stopping point. Okay, so, so that is really what, uh, Wilberger thinks. However, um, he didn't he didn't get it right. So let, let's see why he didn't get it right. Um, what he says about point and line is not true. Firstly, those definitions have zero to do with any kind of drawing. Okay, it's got nothing to do with drawing or construction. Secondly, what one calls a point is merely a visualization or physical instantiation of the actual concept. That is a location or a place. Uh, the very first uh, definition given is Simeon estin umeros uthen, which literally pronounced, which literally interpreted means point is of place nothing. Uh, and the best way to have written this in English is just simply this, a point is the concept of location. It is not defined past the conceptual stage in definition one. And of course, definition two and three are more uh, uh, more uh, information about the definition or the concept of a line. Grammi de micos aplates, which means a line has no breadth, and gramis de perata simia, which means a line does not exceed two endpoints. Uh, and of course, nothing is mentioned here in particular uh, about distance, which is the main property. That's really what uh, Euclid was referring to. A line does not consist of points. However, points are like distance markers along a path that describes the line. Imagine if you have a road and you have uh, signs that describe how far you've traveled in kilometers or miles. So uh, Norman Wilberger, neither any other academic after Euclid or before me understood these things. Now I know that Euclid and the ancient Greeks understood these things correctly. And if you download my free book, 
uh, which you can get on the single variable calculus, you will see in chapter four that I derive all these concepts correctly without any uh, vagueness or circularity or self-reference. And chapter four has all that information. Unfortunately, uh, Euclid didn't uh, succeed in writing these things down perfectly, but he got as close to perfect as anybody could because he was a pioneer and the very first uh, one to write down all these facts. Okay, so I'm coming back to this book in a second. At any rate, then at 1918, uh, Wilberger claims that Euclid didn't measure distance uh, because comparing one line segment with another is a qualitative measure. Okay, so Euclid did measure distance. And it was not a case of picking up one line and placing it on the other, as Wildberger incorrectly states, but rather a case of proving that the distances are equal. And then he contradicts himself later on when he talks about one segment being twice the other. Well, if it's twice the other, that already implies measure has taken place. So again, uh, he contradicts himself later by saying two segments are in the ratio of 5-3. Well, if you can say that, a lot of measure has taken place there, okay? You've measured both segments and you've compared them so that they are in a particular ratio. Distance was later formalized using areas through the theorem of Pythagoras. And of course, Wildberger is also wrong about the measure of angles being problematic. There were, there were no problems because the ancient Greeks measured angles in terms of right angles. And there was nothing... Uh, that was problematic or ill-formed about it. And of course, uh, Wilberger likes to say these things because he's come up with something called rational trigonometry, <laughs> which quite frankly is, is a load of junk, in my opinion. And it doesn't provide any benefits or any advantage over uh, Greek trigonometry, which has lasted all these hundreds of years. The next problem ha occurs, or the next uh, thing I noticed, occurs at 22 minutes and 35 seconds. And this is the proof of the proposition that I showed you earlier, this, this one here, Proposition 35. Now, Euclid goes to great lengths to prove this. However, it's very easy to prove this proposition using similar triangles. Okay, and let me just quickly go to 22.35. 22.35. Okay, so at this particular point, uh, Wilberger says that <laughs> the Greeks didn't actually know about multiplication. He's wrong. He's, because he thinks that just because they, they used rectangles, they weren't really measuring. But the way a rectangle or a plane number was defined is a measure. And when Euclid used a rectangle in his proofs, he was referring to the property of area. So measure was taking place, contrary to what Wilberger says. Okay, and let's go over my comment very quickly. Uh, the proof of that proposition requires a lot of early results, which Euclid derived systematically. However, it is much easier seen once the theory of similar triangles is known, and this is what Euclid was leading up to. So it's incorrect to say that no measurement was taking place. The rectangles being discussed are measures. They are measures of area. Euclid was referring to measure through area. The astute individual will realize that multiplication and division were around long before algebra and defined without numbers, that is, using line segments. Just stop and think about that, okay? The operations of multiplication and division, as well as subtraction and addition, were defined without numbers using magnitudes in the form of line, se line segments, okay? But what is the main attribute of a line segment? That's right, it is a length or a distance. So to talk about line segments in algebra, we use special names called numbers, right? So if we say, uh, two lines are in the ratio of 5, 3, we're referring to those lines by the names 5 and 3. A number is the measure of a magnitude, okay? A number describes the measure of a magnitude. I was the first in human history to well-define number. Um, 
you, uh, Wildberger has never understood what is a number. Neither has any other academic after Euclid or before me. I was the first. So at any rate, um, I just wanted to point out these things. And then my final comment, uh, because Wilberger talks about constructions, the constructions were not really part of the theory of elements, only a physical means of visualizing the actual concepts being discussed. Nothing is proved by constructions, by the way. Uh, plotting a little point like you see here, that's not a point. That's just the concept of location. That straight, that little symbol there is not a line. A line, a straight line in particular, is the shortest distance between two points. And a line is just the distance between the two endpoints. Points do not lie on a line. They are like road markers on a road. And this little circle here, <laughs> this symbol of a circle is not a circle. Um, a circle is that path that is equidistant from a certain point, and it has a certain distance, which is 2 pi times the radius. And I'm not going to go into that right now, but I'm just trying to show you that most professors of mathematics never understood the elements of Euclid. And from their dullness and their stupidity came the false notion of axioms and postulates. There are no axioms or postulates in mathematics. And you can see me derive all these things in chapter four of my free book, my free ebook, which is called An Introduction to the Single Variable New Calculus. So I, I urge you to download it and study it as if your mathematics life depended on it, because you simply cannot understand number or mathematics or calculus without it. So. This is the New Calculus Channel. My name is John Gabriel. Till next time, goodbye.